Hi, my name is Brian Mercier. I'm a professional Catholic speaker, retreat leader, author, and in this video we are going to be talking about anti-Catholics and how they attack the Catholic Church and their argumentation and why it's wrong. My name is Brian Mercier and this channel is dedicated to explaining and defending the Catholic faith, God, and we talk about life and living. And so I talk to anti-Catholics and I get attacked by anti-Catholics all the time. And they have a terrible method of argumentation many times. For example, they'll say, you Catholics worship Mary. And I'll say, we don't worship Mary, we only worship God because the Bible is clear that there is only one God and he alone must be worshipped. Mary, she's only a woman, you know, she, she's not worshipped, we don't worship her at all. Then they'll just go off on a tangent of different things. They're like, well, you worship the Pope and you, you kiss his feet and you bow before statues and, and you don't read the Bible, you believe in purgatory and you believe in all, all these unscriptural doctrines, you Catholics are going to hell. And so... Notice they didn't actually discuss what they originally discussed. Do Catholics worship Mary? They didn't, I mean, if Catholics worship Mary and they still think Catholics worship Mary, well, maybe they should make a follow-up point to that. Or if they realize, okay, you don't worship Mary because you only think she's a woman and no human being could ever be God to be worshipped. So that's a good point. That's fair. Well, what about this point? No, they just skip that, admitting they're wrong, and they just go on a barrage of unleashing. Well, you worship the Pope and you confess your sins to a priest. And the Bible says you only confess your sins to God. I'm like, wait a second. The Bible says in John 20, 21 through 23, to confess sins to priests, to men. Jesus gave men the power to forgive sin. Well, your priests molest little kids. I mean, how can you be part of a church that molests little kids? And notice they didn't even deal with the argument. They just attack, attack, attack. And that's absolutely sophomoric, immature method of reasoning and discussing and debating. I mean, it's literally immature because you're not dealing with the actual points. You're not even trying to have an actual discussion. Now, to be fair, many of these people are probably ex-Catholics. Many of them are probably angry. Some of them may have been hurt by the church they were part of. And so they're letting all of this anger out on you. And this is good for you to know, which so you never get mad at them. You never get angry. You never get defensive. You just take it and you try to answer the things the best you can. Oftentimes I'll say, hey, those are all good objections. Why don't we talk about one of them? Which one would you like to discuss first? And then we'll discuss that one until both of us feel satisfied, and then we'll go on to another topic. And so sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes I just have to back up if they keep telling me I'm going to hell, I'm going to hell, I'm going to hell, the Catholic Church is evil, it started by the devil himself, and they just go off on all these tangents. Sometimes I'll just say, what happened to you? Were you ever Catholic? What happened? And sometimes, you know, they'll get in the backstory about how this priest said this to them or saw how some person injured them in the church. And it's not really about doctrine anyways. It was about something deeper. It was about something emotional. It's an emotional argument that they're making, kind of like many atheists make emotional arguments. And it's not really about the doctrines themselves. What can we take away from this? Learn methodology. Learn how. Just because you know your faith doesn't mean you know how to share it in a way that's productive. Well, it doesn't mean you can share it in a way that, well, you're not being a jerk. You're not giving back to them fighting fire with fire. No, get, learn how to give it in a way that people will receive it. Learn how to ask questions. So for example, they'll say, well, you worship Mary. And I'm like, what makes you think we worship Mary? And they're like, well, you pray to her. I'm like, well, that's a good thought, but we don't really pray to her. We ask her to pray for us to Jesus, just as I ask other people on earth to pray for me to Jesus. That's not really praying to her. And in fact, the word pray means to beseech or to intercede. That's what the word means in, in the dictionary. That's one of the definitions. So we're just asking her to intercede for us just as we would others. I'm, I'm like, what else makes you think that we worship Mary? And so we'll go through these whole things and I get to explain the Catholic faith and untwist their misunderstandings and misconceptions regarding Catholicism. Most people who don't like the Catholic Church don't understand the Catholic Church. And so when I ask these questions, I get to help them to understand it in a way that's not confrontational between us. And we can have a very good discussion. And almost always I have great discussions with people, even if they're vehemently anti-Catholic. Only the most hardened anti-Catholics, the ones who mm, 
maybe be a few french fries short of a happy meal anyways. They're the ones who would never listen, you know, and they'll just yell and scream at you no matter what you say. They'll condemn you to hell no matter what you say, and you know what? You just pray for them because they condemned Jesus too on the cross, and you know what Jesus did? He prayed for them. He definitely didn't give it back to them the way they did to us. So think about that. Learn your faith. Learn how to explain it and actually practice, you know, sharing it with people and pray for the people. Pray for these people. Maybe even offer them a Catholic book to read. Maybe, you know, say, hey, have you ever read a Catholic book, you know, and maybe give them a Catholic book to read. Maybe give them a pamphlet about the Catholic Church and say, hey, can you read that? You know, and even if you find it wrong, you know, let's discuss it afterwards. And then you can have a cordial discussion. Jesus didn't sit there condemning everyone. Jesus didn't sit there yelling at everyone, telling everyone they were going to hell. No, he was loving. He was kind. And if you're an anti-Catholic watching this, I'm talking to you. He was kind. Even if you disagree with Catholicism, that's fine. You have the freedom to disagree with Catholicism, but you don't have the freedom to be a jerk about it, and you don't have a, the freedom to be un-Christ-like, to be not like Jesus. I mean, and in fact, the more like Jesus you are, the more you're going to talk like him, the more you're going to act like him, the more you're just going to be like him in daily life. And that includes in and out of church. So, what do you think? Question of the day, what are your thoughts on this? Whether you're Catholic or whether you're anti-Catholic, Put your comments below. What do you think? I mean, even if you think the Catholics are going to hell, but what do you think about people who act like that and who talk like that? Is it productive? Is it helpful? Does it turn people off or does it lead people closer to Christ? Hmm. Some deep thoughts for you to think about as you like my video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and share it with others. And make sure to come back soon because I'll have many more videos for you. God bless.